نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله من هدى ودين الحق لنظهره على الدين كله ولو كان المشركون اما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز المحكم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ليس البر ان تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر ان امنوا بالله واليوم الاخر والملائكه والكتاب والنبيين واتى المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب واقام الصلاه واتى الزكاه والموفون بعهده اذا عاهدوا والصابرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس اولئك الذين صدقوا واولئك هم المتقون My dear respectful brothers and sisters, uh, as usual, my Friday lectures, I always prefer to use in two ways. As we say, to kill one, uh, two birds with one stone. And I use it in two ways. One of them is that we take it as a as class as a teaching um, class that I am teaching something. And so everybody who attends should get some benefit, should learn something on that day. That's one way. The other way is admonition, preaching, that I remind you and yourself uh, about fearing Allah, and good deeds, prohibitions, and all that, whatever that uh, lecture is all about. So today, and uh, taking that, uh, always that I'm tracking from there, uh, the topic is that I want to explain one word, which is called albir. Albir, that is the topic today. But it can be, uh, I, I cannot even finish it in today or even many other days. It needs a series of lectures. So what I will do, inshallah, in this verse, this particular verse, I will start it today. Whether I cover the first part or not, I will try to continue for a time, uh, the allocated time. And then after that, um, I will pick up from there in the next Friday uh, football. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us uh, um, four categories of how to make birr and what birr is all about. So the birr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the first in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 177. So anybody who is interested in later on, you can um, go and check it and then you can learn more about this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر أن آمن بالله اليوم الآخر. First Allah is saying just to highlight the meaning of the surah that Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying righteousness is not that you turn your face towards east or west or both. So righteousness 
being good, it's not that way. That we turn your face to this direction or this direction. But what it is, Allah is telling us, it is this one. But righteousness is to believe in Allah. In Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. That's one category. And is these five which are the believing, the pillars of believing. Believing in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. So that is one category. Second, Allah is saying to spend wealth in spite of love for it on relatives, orphans, helpless, needing wayfarers, and those who ask for it, and of the redemption or ransoming the captive people, somebody who is under arrest or under slavery situation. Thirdly, to establish prayers, to pay charity, to fulfill promises when you make any promise. And fourth category is that you be patient and steadfast in the situations of poverty, hardship, difficulties in the war time, and so on. So anyone who goes into that have that have attributes of birth. Those are the component, components of birth. So if you successfully do all those and practice it, then you are among those who are the truthful. Those are the ones who are truthful and those are the ones who are the bias, and those are the ones who are successful. Then, this is general of the ayah, but we need to go to word to word and analyze it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us this birri is the fundamental of Islam. So the birri and first to explain to the, and define the word birri, uh, there is no actually particular word which is comparable to birri or that can give you the meaning of birri. But then what I will do is just to bring, to collect several terminologies and combine them together. Then it shows you the meaning of birri. Those terminologies which birri can show you the meaning of birri, among them is to is value the values. Quality, good quality, righteousness, goodness, being nice, being pious, pious, pious. It's very important and being denied and also to be obedient to Allah and those of that you are uh, under their uh, order to obey the law to obey the normal life that you are in and to be patient the other general meaning is perfection and completion of the social welfare. To make social welfare in a perfect way. So I now I'm going after this word of social welfare under the bill. The bill then that is a social welfare, it shows you that to be to have the best relationship with Allah, the Almighty, the one who created you, and at the same time 
to have the best relationship with the human being that you live here. And the nature and animal, all the creatures. When to do all that, then to, uh, to understand more this means of uh, query is that we all experience each other. So there are other firsts that we can deal with this first and then we understand the meaning of birri. If you go, and this is ayah number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah, if you go five surahs down to that, then you will find the word birri coming back again. Almost the same meaning, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Yes, alunaka anil ahillati kul hiya mawaqitu lil nas wa al-hajj wa laysa al-birru bi an ta'tu al-buyuta min duhuriha wa lakin al-birru wa in taqa wa atu al-buyuta min awabiha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse the birru righteousness biases it's not that you come to your houses from behind. Not to enter your house from the window, but to enter your house through the door, through the main gate. So this is, we should not take it as literal the way it is. It's a metaphor. That metaphor tells us to be straightforward. Not to interact with the society in a form of being zigzag, being hypocrite, being uh, having this color today and tomorrow this color, and trying not to cheat the law uh, that is uh, in the place, but to be straightforward. So you enter your house through the door. That's the meaning of good to be straight and direct. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this spirit is the one that can give us promotion, can make us successful. This spirit is the one who can give us the success in this world and here after. Why? If you look at the main given very Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it in a form of now, where it can be attractive because it shows attributes and it is it can be a verb, but Allah uses it in a form of now to give it its real meaning. Because it is to shape the person and the person becomes that meaning exactly. So you are the reflection of Birri. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you say Birri, when you want to make it a noun or a person, the person who is making Birri is Bar or Bar. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al Maryam, in the case of Jesus alayhi salam, when he's saying, wa barram wa liberty. So to be Bar is that. To be obedient to my parents, that's what he said to me. To be obedient to my mother. And also in plural, when Allah is saying, Inmal abhar la fi ma'in, it is that plural abhar, those who, whose attribute, attribute is making birth. They are in the light, in the light situation. So this word, Birri, it shows all those meanings. Let's go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْ تُوَلُّوا وَجُوَهَكُمْ قِبَرَ الْأَشْرِيَةِ وَلْغَمْ رِبِي Allah is saying, doing right, being right, righteous person, being biased, it is not that you turn your face towards east or west. What is the meaning there? It is that goodness is not by action. It's not what you do. It's not how you demonstrate yourself. It is not how you show your structure. 
So it is not about, it has nothing to do with the dress code, the type of dress you are wearing, whether it is expensive or not, whether it's terrible or not, whether whatever it is. So as long as you have, you, you, you cover your, uh, the right part of your body, then it is fine. That is one way. It's not about the length of your beard. It's a man, you have long beard and soft. It's not that way. Beard is not all that. It is not that you will make east and west by telling that you were born in the Middle East. So you are very close to the Islam. You are the best because you were born in Mecca. It has nothing to do with that. Really, it doesn't matter where you were born, where you are originated from. It has nothing to do with your background, your grandparents. It's individual accountability. So this individual accountability is one person, what you have in your heart and what you demonstrate in action. It's all about that. Then that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showed us. Many ulama when they are explaining this ayah, they say it is not the prayer, because the prayer you either turn your face to east or west. Then it is not that way. So when the meaning comes to the prayer, what do you expect from other things which are not even related to the prayer? Okay, in the prayer, when you are praying, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we will see in the coming, and the meaning which is coming soon, is Allah always uses to establish the prayer, but not to pray. Establish prayer. So, what is the difference there? There are prayers which we usually do today. Most of us, we are in this situation that we do it physical as physical exercise. So, physical exercise that you come to the prayer, you don't even know what you what you are hitting. You you don't try to understand the meaning. You don't try to reflect upon it. You don't try to follow it. You just go. And you go up and down, and then you are done in a few minutes. Then, when it is that situation, that is not the type of prayer which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. Moreover, what about if you pray, but you are not following? How Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is prepared. Because prayer, you have to follow the full steps of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that needs another uh, special lecture. And when we say that uh, the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling us. It's not this one, it's not this one, it's not this one. Then Allah is telling us what it is. So what it is, what really is, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالْكِتَابِ To the end of the ayah. Allah is saying to us, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ But indeed, the will, the righteousness, is to believe in Allah only. So to believe in Allah, let's understand the meaning of believing in Allah. Just in short words. Believing in Allah is that monotheism, you believe in one Allah and you submit yourself to that Allah. From there, you will not worry about somebody to curse, to curse you, to cast an evil eye on you, to make such and such things to you, and you will die because of that person. 
If you believe in that, then you don't believe in Allah. You, you made that person as your God. Again, if you believe that somebody can help you and just that he will say something or he will use some kind of fabrication and will make you rich very soon, then that is not that is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you give the job of Allah to somebody, that means you recognize that person as your Allah. When you ask somebody to give you like children, you believe in that he is their God. Therefore, you know in this world, even if you ask those who worship multiple gods, if you ask them today and they will say to you, I believe in one Allah, one God, everybody is going to say, I believe in one God. But what is practical there? Within our Muslims, we have many people who are begging others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or begging Allah through ancestors, asking somebody to ask Allah on behalf of them and so and so, which means, which is in the way of that you believe this is the person who can give you such and such. So believing in Allah needs a lot of work and really when you tell yourself to Allah and believe what Allah, that's when you will realize the meaning and how this is sweet and nice and give you comfort in your life. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. My dear brothers and sisters, as I've told you this verse, I would urge you to go and research this verse and understand each of these instructions. Then you will learn Allah. So Allah, when He says the righteousness, to believe in one Allah and second on Yom and Akhir to believe the last day you have to accept and admit the last day so the last day why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving emphasis on the last day it is that you cannot demonstrate how you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless you believe there is a last day. And how to believe in the last day? It's not that you limit it to lip service. You say that there is a last day. You will have They just said and there is no practice. With that means you don't believe. And you really believe that there is a last day, you will have to you will have to sin from your actions. And the last day is all the religions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. They were always, each religion was telling to believe in one God and the last day here after, the day of the resurrection and the day of judgment. That's what all the religions were showing. Even if you look at those religions of Buddhism, Buddhism, you can see that. When you see that Buddhism are saying the life is the incarnation cycle that you die today and you will come back next week or after a year. Means they have the concept of the last day. So the last day is they are thinking that it's coming back and back and all the day cycle. Uh, which means it's misconception of the last day. Therefore, the last day is this the day we will have it in our mind and all our practices are all are based on that we are recognizing the last day and we are planning it for the last day. So then yeah, the last day is that uh, that has that important it's so significant. 
I'm just concluding one or but I can then in the next Friday inshallah and I will continue about the main charity and to many parts of the people and uh, prayer and all those. But now just to stop on Malaik or Malaik believing in the angels. What is the significance of believing in the angels? What do we want from them? And why should we believe them? It is very simple that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that first of all we should believe in him in the last day and then the angels. So the angels are because they are always with us. They are working on us. They are table ati. They are on our shoulder and recording whatever we say, whatever we and, and act upon, and all the, the stand, uh, all our actions. They are recording and they are counting. So then they will want to, they want to display, they will display our book in front of us in here at the day of judgment. That is we should know that. So then it will uh, uh, apply to our deeds. We will understand our deeds because we have that in our mind. On the other way, we have to know that angels, they are working, they are the servants of Allah. Because Allah, the soldiers of Allah are so many. So the angels are among the soldiers of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they work on the sky, the heavens, the throne, and all that. So they are those serpents, they are doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we just recognize them as that. On the other hand, we should not worship them. We should not believe that they are the ones who can help us in such and such things. So we don't worship them. We only respect them. We know they exist and how they are Allah's the work, the soldiers of Allah So in short, then at the other ayah that uh, inshallah I will do the next is the ayah that always the Fatim says the last but needs explanation. Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna Allah ya'mur bil'ali wa lihsa wa yitaha'i wa yukurba wa yana'a an fa'sha'i wa al-munkari in short, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Allah commands justice, goodness, good ethics, good conduct, um, and giving to near relatives. And Allah forbids indecency, injustice, immorality, and rebellion. And Allah adorns you so that you may be, you may take heed and be understood. Thank you.